Hello, episode number nine of Sheikh Mahmoud Shabbat studies called Shannon Ra's The Rose Garden of Mysteries. In this episode, we're going to discuss a part of a poem in which uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Shabbat discusses philosophers and rational thinking. I'm going to first read the entire poem in Persian and um, then we are going to analyze it line by line and step by step. گهی اندر تسلسل گشته محبوس چو اقلش کرد در هستی توقل فرو پیچید پایش در تسلسل ظهور جمله اشیا به زد است ولی حق را نمانند و نند است چو نبوت ذات حق را زد تو همتا ندانم تا چگونه داندو را ندارد ممکن از واجب نمونه چگونه داندش آخر چگونه زهی نادان که او خورشید تابان now let, let's analyze this beautiful poem step by step. Hakim falsafi chun has tehran nami binad ze ashya ghayr imkan. The philosopher is perplexed because he does not see in entities uh, but their possibility. And uh, the line following that says ze imkan mi konad isbat wajib. Az in hayran shudan dar zat wajib. Um, so here's uh, some explanation is due in philosophy what we do is like we say uh, everything in the corporeal world everything is a contingent entity um, so there are possibilities um, and uh, for a possibility to come into existence there should be another entity so let's say there is entity one and uh, we are just investigating where this entity comes from. So there should be a beginning because uh, this is not necessary. This is a possibility. This is uh, a contingent being. So there must be a cause. So the philosophers, uh, says the Sheikh, um, are looking for uh, the, the beginning and the cause of this entity. So let's call this entity two. So entity two is the cause of entity one. Um, but here again, the problem rises. Is it, is, is this entity necessary or contingent? If necessary, fine, the equation stops here. There is this necessary being, entity two, uh, which causes entity one to come into existence. But if, again, this entity itself is contingent, it's possible, then we need another entity as the cause. So we need to go back, we need to regress. And this chain continues. So Shabestari here is saying that um, the philosopher's perplexity, his reason is that they are trying to uh, prove the existence of the necessary from the contingent. They are trying to prove that there is a necessary being, God, a being whose existence doesn't depend on another being, a being whose existence is necessary. He depends on himself uh, to exist, not on another entity. So uh, he says, look, like, look, philosophers accept this, that there is a necessary being, but when they start analyzing it, they start from analyzing possible entities. And that's why they cannot get to the destination because from the possible entities, you cannot, uh, in, in, through rational thinking, you cannot get to the necessary existence. That's why he says the last part, as in heyran shodan darizate wajib. This is why they are perplexed in the essence of the necessary the essence of the real of God. Gahi az dor darat seyre ma'kus, gahi an dar tasalsul gashte mahbus. And then um, here, uh, the Sheikh is discussing how the philosophers are stuck in their uh, rational approach. Um, so again, we have discussed this in the previous episodes. Um, this whole tradition is not against rationalism, but it's just referring to the limits of rationalism unlike scientism and uh, positivism um, in which like science can do everything, logic can do everything. Um, here it says, look, you can use logic, but uh, that only can get you so far. 
that's the first step and you're encouraged to learn that all these mystics are great great philosophers but philosophy is the first step you got to take a further step to experience these uh the, the, these things that you have th theoretically learned and that's where mysticism comes in so he's now referring to those limitations so investigating the possible entities the corporeal um, contingent entities uh entity two now we want to see where its causes so either its cause is the first possibility first contingent entity that we discussed or another possible entity or a necessary entity so it, if it is the first one and uh, here we are stuck here the philosopher is stuck because between the two entities uh, this depends on the first one and the first one depends on the second one and we are stuck here or we say uh, that there is another cause bringing uh, causing um, the second entity and that cause is either the third one is either a necessary one in which the equation comes to an end that that is there is this uh, necessary uh, entity as the cause of this and uh, this possible entity or again it depends on another possible entity again we get back to square one what is the cause of that possible entity so it, then again it goes uh, further it goes uh, one step back another entity if it is possible we gotta go back if it is necessary we stop there so considering these uh, says uh, Shabbos Dari, the philosopher gets to uh, the existence of necessary because either you're gonna consider the two entities uh, just dependent on, on, on each other two possible entities and just uh, go back and forth here or uh, you gotta go back on other possible entities and it's an infinite regression it's not gonna end so unless there is a necessary entity there, unless there is a first cause, that that regression is going to continue, and that's what we what we in philosophy call infinite regression, and um, that cannot work. There, there must be a start. It cannot go infinitely. So uh, he says the philosopher gets to the conclusion that uh, there must be a necessary entity, a first cause. In the next line, he says. چو اقلش کرد در هستی توغل فرو پیچید پایش در تسلسل because he is just stuck in the corporeal existence and trying to um, prove the necessary through the contingent uh, through the possible uh, that's why he's stuck in that regression and um, he gets to a point where he theoretically says okay there must be a first cause but uh, the true knowledge, he says, uh, Shab Shabastari says, the true knowledge of the real does not come to you like this. You cannot prove the necessary from uh, the possible fully and understand that reality and experience that reality. For that, you need divine intuition uh, through which you do not get stuck through uh, logical arguments you observe you see you experience the thing you are looking for instead of looking for it on paper through the laws of logic you get to experience the real you get to experience the necessary that's what you are looking for says Shabastari. so uh, he says get your facts straight and get your approaches straight if you're looking for the necessary that's not the way that's the beginning that can help but the way is here you want to experience that you can you, you, you cannot just prove it on paper and just uh, understand it fully he says the manifestation of the corporeal entities the manifestation of the things in this world uh, is to their opposites that is to understand uh, light to, to, to observe light there should be darkness so that you can distinguish them um, to distinguish they there should be night so there should be the opposites from which you understand the other side of the coin but uh, as it says in the shale, in the second part of that line um, the real does not have anything resembling him or equal to him and then he asks in a rhetorical way uh, because there is no opposite because there is no equality uh, with, 
in the essence of the real. Uh, so how can you ever know that? Because we said we first we need the opposites for things to manifest and so that you perceive them. And in the divine essence, there is no such thing. So how in the world do you expect to understand that essence? And Lahiji adds something here, Lahiji the commentator. Um, he says, uh, anyone who tries to understand the real from things, from entities, he is an ignorant. The real knower is someone who understands entities from the real. Again, we go back to what uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestai said in the, in the previous lines. He said, uh, the knower, the mystic, first sees the real and then sees the entities. And Laiji is putting that differently, he's rephrasing, paraphrasing it, saying that uh, if, if, you, if you look at entities and see entities and then infer from those entities that there is this real, you're, you're, you're an ignorant. The real knower is someone who sees that face everywhere he or she looks. Nadanat mumkin as wajib numune. Chegune danadash akhar. Chegune. Zehi nadan ke u khurshid taban be nur sham juyat dar biyaban. So uh, here we have the Sheikh is saying in order for you to understand uh, the first entity through another entity, there, uh, the, the second entity should have something as a sample of the first entity. If it doesn't, you're not going to understand it. And then he says, look, um, the contingent, the possible, does not have something in common with the necessary. Then he asks rhetorically, how so how do you understand that necessary from that contingent? Because they have nothing in common. And because you cannot understand uh, the necessary from the contingent, all you could do is to go through negation, uh, saying, look, this necessary does not have this specific quality that the contingent has. And then uh, this is uh, basically Lahiji opening this part. Uh, then Lahiji says, look, uh, if, if you do this, you're not going to get to that certitude. You'll always be in doubt, like you, you're going to go with negations. You're not going to realize that reality. So he says, um, the knowledge that the philosophers gain is not the knowledge of certitude. For certitude, you need a further knowledge. Take the first step, study philosophy, but that's not going to give you certitude about divine knowledge. For that, you need another step, and that comes with mysticism. The end of this part is an interesting simile. I'm going to read again. Uh, Shabestai says, Zehi nadan ke u khurshid taban be nur sham juyat dar biyaban. Fool is someone who is looking for the bright sun in the desert through the light of a candle. So he's saying someone who is looking uh, to trying to prove and um, fully understand the necessary through through the contingent, through the possible, um, uh, is like someone who's trying to discover and find the bright sun that is right there in the middle of the desert uh, with nothing to cover it through the light of a candle. That's the end of um, this episode. I'm going to stop right here. Uh, so in this episode, Shabastari was basically butchering philosophies. Again, I'm emphasizing uh, he or none of uh, Islamic mystics are against um, rational thinking. It's just that rational thinking has limits and one should uh, recognize that. Uh, we, someone who is to step in this field, in this path, should study philosophy helps greatly. But philosophy only can get you so far, rational thinking can only get you so far, then you need another step. And that step comes through mysticism, according to Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, if you liked, please press that like button, it's going to help the channel. I'm looking forward to be with you in the next episode.